It's been almost three months since the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra has come out, and I've taken well over 2,000 photos with this device. Since its release, it's also gotten a couple of software updates, and the most recent April update has changed the camera experience by quite a bit, but we'll get more into that later on in this video. Basically, I find myself taking more photos because it's just so much easier to capture, edit, and post all from one device. As you can see from the example shots, this phone is able to produce some really stunning results, especially with the 50 megapixel and 200 megapixel modes. Keep in mind that all these examples are edited to my own style using my preset system, which is exactly how I would edit the RAW files from my Sony cameras. It just goes to show that with a quick edit, it's becoming really hard to tell if a photo came from a phone or a camera. And before we get any deeper in this video, I want to give a disclaimer and say that I bought the S23 Ultra with my own money to review and test. So if you want to support me and my channel, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you like it. I also try to be as unbiased as possible. And to be honest, while I love shooting with this phone, there are a few things that I'm not overly impressed with and Samsung could definitely improve on. But don't get me wrong, the updates over the last generation are pretty substantial, despite the near identical looking shell. But I'm not gonna go over all of the tech specs because there are a ton of other videos that already do that. Instead, I'm gonna focus on the camera system and the shooting experience. Because as a phone, most of these flagships are more than capable enough. It's the camera system that really differentiates one from another. And when you're paying well over $1,000 for a new device, don't you want to know that you have the best? So we'll start off with the POV segment, where I take this phone out onto the streets of New York City to do some street photography. This way, you can see how this phone performs in real life shooting conditions. Then, we'll dive into Lightroom to really pixel peep at some of those photos and look at those details. And with a 200 megapixel sensor, there are a ton of pixels to look at. We're starting off this photo walk with the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra on a rainy, dreary day in New York City. Right off the bat, I really like the slightly flatter edges as it helps with the ergonomics. As I'm walking, the first thing that caught my eye was this wall of graffiti. Usually I love taking photos of graffiti because it's a great way to test out the color reproduction as well as the sharpness. And you can see from this image, everything looks kind of washed out. So I wasn't really impressed with this shot straight out of the device. But with a quick edit in Lightroom, I was able to make it look like a nice, gritty New York City street scene. At this next corner, I noticed this woman sitting across at the intersection. So I used the 3x lens to take this shot. Again, the original image looked kind of flat and overexposed. So in my edit, I made it more moodier to match how it looked in real life. Now this next segment is really important because I wanted to show the slow shutter issue that many people are complaining about. As you can see, as this person walks through the frame, I was able to capture three quick shots, but the person was blurry in all of them. Now to be clear, this is not shutter lag, which is what a lot of people have been calling it. This is an issue with slow shutter speeds. In the camera assistant app, I use the fast shutter option to greatly reduce shutter lag. This means that as soon as I press the shutter button, the phone is able to snap the photo. If you don't know too much about camera assistant, it enables a bunch of hidden camera settings. And if you want to learn more about it, check out the video that I made. So shutter lag is not really an issue with this phone, especially after the April update. The camera app is really responsive, and as soon as I tap the shutter, it will snap the photo. Samsung just needs to improve their shutter speed algorithm in order to capture fast moving subjects. And while this is a huge issue for capturing things like pets or kids that run around a lot, for street shooting, it can kind of be a cool effect, especially if you put a quick edit on it. However, it's not all bad because at this next block, the fire truck caught my attention and I was able to snap a couple of really quick shots and all of them came out looking really good. Just by using the One X camera in auto mode, you can see that the images look contrasty and vibrant. So this phone is able to produce great results. It's just not very consistent. Now this is a different day and once again, I'm trying to test out the shutter speed issue in auto mode but this time I'm working with more light since it's brighter out. The phone is still not able to freeze the mopeds passing through the frame, 
but it was a lot better than the shots on that cloudy day. Then I tried a comparison with scene optimizer on and off. You can see that there's a very slight difference with lower saturation, but overall I think it's better just to keep it on for the best auto shooting experience. For this next sequence, I took a bunch of shots across the zoom range, starting from 100x and went all the way down to 0.6x. You can see this level of versatility is still unmatched in any other smartphone. Lastly, here's a 200 megapixel shot at the same location. This image is zoomed in to 300% and you can still make out some of those details. So that 200 megapixel sensor has a ton of potential and we'll see more 200 megapixel photos in the Lightroom segment later on. At this next location, I'm using Pro Mode and setting a high shutter speed to show that the phone is more than capable of freezing motion as long as the shutter speed is high enough. So it's definitely not a hardware issue and Samsung can improve this with software updates. But with Pro Mode, the raw images definitely look flat so a quick edit was able to bring back some of that golden hour glow. As I kept walking, this coffee shop across the street caught my eye because I really liked how the light was hitting just that area with the people and the rest of the storefront was covered in shadow. You can see from this shot that once again, it looks kind of flat and slightly overexposed. The shadow area was just way too bright. While this is great for HDR and seeing those shadows in the darker areas, it's just not really my aesthetic and overall, I would like a more contrasty look. So after manually adjusting the exposure slider, I was able to achieve the look that I was going for and you can see how this image has much richer colors, deeper blacks, and your eye is drawn straight to the people because they are at the brightest part of the image. So with the S23 Ultra, I find that it's really important to manually adjust the exposure slider because it definitely has a tendency to overexpose by default. I would say maybe 90% of the shots would be overexposed and I'm not exaggerating. So hopefully this is another thing that Samsung can fix with a future update. But if you also have this phone, let me know in the comments below if you are also experiencing this problem because maybe it could just be my unit. Like I mentioned in my other S23 Ultra camera settings video, the 50 megapixel mode is one of my favorites, especially when I use it on the 2X crop mode. Zooming into 2x gives roughly a 50 millimeter equivalent, which is one of my favorite focal lengths to shoot with. And especially after the April update, the processing time on the 50 and 200 megapixel modes have been greatly reduced. So this just means that you can fire off more shots with less lag in between. Check out all of these 50 megapixel shots from a recent photo walk that I did. Now let's head over to Lightroom and Pixel Peep at some photos and analyze those details with a critical eye. All right, now we're in Lightroom and I really like this shot taken with the 3x telephoto because of the colors and the light in the scene. The neon colors like the orange and blue are slightly too saturated for my liking, but overall it's a pretty realistic rendering of the scene and I'm really impressed that this came out of a phone because nothing looks too overprocessed. At the same location, here is a 50 megapixel shot but taken with the 3x crop from the camera. Once again, looking at the entire frame, the colors look really good and the image looks great overall. However, when you zoom in, you can start to see a lot of noise and loss of detail. This is not the quality that I would have expected from a 50 megapixel shot. However, because I was using the 3X crop, there's probably some post-processing going on in the device, resulting in the softness and these weird artifacts that you can see especially in the darker areas on the left side of the frame, like on his pant leg, on the car, as well as in his door frame. These small specks definitely should not be there. Now, here's a 200 megapixel shot, and I am shooting straight into the sun on purpose to test out the flare resistance and pattern. Obviously, there is a pretty big sun flare on the left side of the frame, but I'm happy to say that it is concentrated and doesn't wash out the entire image. Zooming in and panning around gives us a better idea of just how much the flare reduces contrast and also how it introduces these rainbow lines. However, in the right side of the frame where there is no sun flare, you can see it retains a ton of detail and you can see the power of that 200 megapixel sensor. Now this is an image taken with the 10x telephoto lens and it looks really impressive. The colors are vibrant but not overly saturated 
and the white balance looks pretty accurate. Zooming in, you can see slight softness and bloom around the highlights, but this could just be due to some smudging on the lens, and it's not a huge concern because it doesn't detract from the image at all. In fact, this slight softness actually makes the image look more realistic and less like the oversharpened photos that you would expect from a phone. For example, there is still a ton of detail in the leaf and the water. Here's a shot using the portrait mode, and once again, I am really impressed with this image. The colors look great, and the cutout of the flower looks flawless. Zooming into the bottom area, we can take a look at the bokeh and the background blur. The leaf on the left, which is closer to the camera, is only slightly blurry. Then the leaves on the right get a little bit more blurry. And in the background, the greenery is almost completely blurred, since it's the furthest away. This is really impressive to me because it accurately simulates the natural falloff from a shallow depth of field lens. Here's a shot taken using the ultra wide in auto mode. Although the image itself is nothing special, it's a great test to see how the ultra wide is able to handle these various colors as well as the extreme difference in exposure. It was able to capture those neon purples and blues really vibrantly, but also keep the other neutral colors well balanced. The HDR is all right, but not the best. You can see some of the outside details, but the extreme shadows are still crushed to black. Here's another example of that 200 megapixel camera. And I just wanna show once again how impressive it is. Because zooming in, you can make out the details on the moss, the flowers, and you can even see the coins inside the fountain. What's even more impressive is that even at the extreme corners of the frame, you're not getting too much softness or smearing of detail. This is a raw file from the expert raw mode, and you can tell because of that computational raw. For example, some of these colors are a bit more vibrant than you would expect from a regular raw file. And you can also see the HDR processing because you can see the shadows are lifted in the darkness of the store. Since this is a raw file, let's quickly edit this image and play with the post-processing. I'm just gonna apply my filmic preset because I think it matches the vibe of this old laundromat. And then I'm gonna play with these global adjustments just to really quickly edit this raw file. Just those slight shift in tones make this image feel more authentic and stylized. Here's a shot taken with the 3X telephoto and I just love the compression in this composition because you can see all of these buildings just layered on top of one another. The white balance and color reproduction are excellent and very true to life, although the neon orange bucket is a tad too vibrant. You can also see a great amount of detail being captured from those posters as well as the graffiti on the wall. I really do enjoy shooting with this telephoto lens because it gives a different perspective than you're used to seeing. Now here's the same location but shot with that 10x telephoto, so we are zoomed in even further at this point. However, you can see that the image looks slightly overexposed and dull. The colors of the poster look brown, but the orange bucket is still too neon. These strange inconsistencies can be corrected in post, but it would be better to have them correct straight out of camera. Now here's a raw file from Pro Mode, and you can tell it's from Pro Mode and not Expert Raw because of the blown out highlights in the sky. Pro mode doesn't use computational RAW, so it's not able to leverage HDR to help level out the exposure. Instead, you get a file which is similar to what you would expect from a RAW file from a camera. But since this is a RAW file, we should be able to bring back some of those blown out highlights, so let's quickly do an edit to see how far we can recover it. Bringing down the highlight slider allows you to see this building a little bit better, but the sky is definitely still blown out with no detail. Thankfully, the sky isn't crucial to this image, and once again, I'm just applying a preset and adjusting the sliders to give this image a more moody New York vibe. Now here's a quick before and after, and you can see how a simple edit can really make this image come to life. For this image, we have a nice shot of this restaurant, and at a glance, it looks pretty good. The colors look decently vibrant, and the white balance also looks pretty accurate. Zooming into the middle of the frame, you can see there's a good amount of detail being retained despite the noise reduction. Even going into some of these darker corners, you can see slight noise, but it's really nothing distracting. So I think the noise reduction is working really well. Here is another nice shot, and you can see right off the bat, some of these lights are way overexposed. Zooming in and looking at the signs, 
you really can't tell what they're saying at all because there's no more detail left. Even looking at the lanterns on the left side of the frame, they look overexposed, even though they are nowhere as bright as the signs. However, the shadow areas still look pretty clean with a lot of detail. For example, you can see the individual links in this chain, as well as the details reflected in this metal gate. Now this last image was shot with the 3x camera, and you can see once again it is slightly overexposed. To be fair, this is a tricky scene to capture because in order to get the people at the front evenly exposed, all of the brighter areas like the signs and the storefront will get overexposed. But I'm disappointed to say that zooming into this image, you can see there's a lot more noise compared to the previous examples. This inconsistency is definitely an area where I hope Samsung can improve in for both day and night shots. All right, so if you're still watching at this point, I really appreciate it. These videos take a ton of time to shoot and edit, especially if a software update can change the results by quite a bit. So once again, if you want to support me, what I do, and this channel, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you like it. I also have my preset system in the description along with some affiliate links as well. But basically this concludes the video and let me know if you think I was overly harsh about some of the issues. And like I said earlier, if you have this phone, let me know if you are also experiencing the same problems. I've also been reading that some people are experiencing blurry sections in their photos, but thankfully my phone doesn't have that, so I can't really provide too much insight there. Overall, I think the S23 Ultra is definitely one of the best devices on the Android side. The cameras have so much potential, and as a phone, it really is the full package. I do wish that it was a bit smaller and more compact, and that there was a physical shutter button because the volume buttons are just way too high. And keep in mind that it is still early on in the year, so there are a lot more devices that are going to come out. So if given the opportunity, I would love to review and test those out as well. Well, that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace.